there is a critique by the Impressionists, and it's why they startled people, is that they didn't obey the rules of the salon or the rules that existed. Of course, as you know, all breakthroughs don't break rules. That's the whole point of the breakthrough. Uh, that is, that the rules are to be challenged. Okay, but there's something else going on here. Uh, by the way, this sunrise impression, it is La Havre Harbor, uh, to the north of Paris and in the north of France, uh, not far from Honfleur and uh, Chouville and Deauville, that is the beaches on La Manche, on the English Channel, okay, uh, 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 where, of course, they played and where they went to, to vacation. Now, the other thing I want to say about this is that it is also not a painting and it breaks a second rule. And the second rule is that Monet argued that the painting is a single moment in time as opposed to a painting of La Havre Harbor for eternity. In other words, he took a non-Platonic view. The idea is that a painting now can only capture a single moment in time rather than trying to capture an eternal verity. You will know and you will have seen other things that Monet did, which are similar to that, most well known are his paintings of the Rouen Cathedral two decades later, where there are some 30 of them, and I think Washington has the most of them actually in the National Gallery, okay? And he stood in the same place, okay, in the center of Rouen, looking at the cathedral, and he painted, I only have two of them, I won't subject you to the 30, okay? I only have two of them and he painted the, them this way. And of course the answer is, one of them, you would argue, if it was a traditional painting, you see, one of them is the Rouen Cathedral and another one got it wrong, okay? But his answer is no. The painter is a painter of atmosphere. The painter is a painter of light. The painter wants to defamiliarize you, okay? In other words, to have you look at something as if you have never seen it before and to see it anew because his argument is it's not merely the object that is the source of painting or the source of reality but it is also the atmosphere around the object that is the source of reality. So that technically if you like City Hall in Toronto looks different in winter than it does in summer looks different at twilight than it might do at midday. We just see the same damn building because we don't have the kind of perception that we have. But what he's trying to get at is the painter, the subject is part of the reality. In other words, how he sees the cathedral and the time that he is seeing the cathedral, it's very modern, is part of the reality. Reality does not solely lie in the object out there and so on. And so, He's, in a sense, challenging the aesthetic, if you like, and can I try this on you? He's trying to say that reality is becoming rather than being. In other words, the notion of reality heretofore had been there are things that are stable and eternal. Okay, we, we live in the 21st century, we should be able to handle this. You know, this is, this is Einstein 1905. Uh, okay, okay, uh, uh, seriously. Okay, that is that, that there are things that are stable and eternal, goes the argument. His argument is no, everything is change. And modernity is not about stability, which I buy, may I yet. Modernity is not about eternal verities, but modernity is about transformation, metamorphosis, and change. And therefore the function of the painter is to record his time. You will note there isn't a single history painting. Okay, they are relentlessly contemporary in every sense of the term. Okay, to record his time, but to record that moment that as he sees it. And that might have a certain kind of value. How does it differ from photography? I'm not sure. Okay, but please remember, okay, photography is just beginning to become a popular thing. The first major war that was photographed was the Crimean War, 1853-56, then the U.S. Civil War, then the Franco-Prussian War, and so on and so forth. Okay, so he's fooling around not merely with what is a painting, I'm arguing, but he's fooling around with the concept of reality. Okay, and the argument is, and, and we've more or less bought it, 
that in modernity, things are always changing. The notion of an eternal present is a fiction. Okay, that is we're always in a kind of transformation. Okay, you will not be tomorrow what you are today. As, as Pythagoras said in 6th century BC, okay, that is you can't step in the same river twice. Uh, this is very, may I add, part of the dialectical notion of reality rather than Aristotelian notion of reality in which reality is always stable. So that's a big challenge, okay, because heretofore from the Renaissance on, the notion is that you're painting something that is stable, eternal, platonic, and perfect. And now, nothing is perfect. It is always in transformation. It is always in change. So that's one critique, and it's a critique of as the aesthetic, if you like, and a critique of what, fancy, what the fancy word in philosophy is ontology, the basic notion of reality. In other words, reality now is always changing. The function of the artist is to capture a moment in time, not something that is eternal, because nothing is eternal. I hate to tell you, everybody, you will die. Okay, not, 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 okay. <laughs> not, not, however old you are, okay? <laughs> that is, nothing is eternal. Uh, things always are in transformation. There is that picture of me over there, which I often tell people that that's the Arthur Haberman that my wife fell in love with, and this is the one she got stuck with. Uh, that is, <laughs> that is <laughs> okay, because it's, it's, it's transformation, metamorphosis, and so on and so forth.